Okay, uh, welcome back from your break. This is video two uh, of the sixth lecture of the engineering design course. Uh, we're going to pick it up here on this slide, which is where we stopped last time. Uh, so I'm going to describe to you guys uh, the function analysis method. Uh, and the, uh, the real purpose uh, of the function analysis method is to focus uh, your concentration on what must be achieved, uh, specifically meeting um, the customer needs um, that are outlined to you by the client. Um, the, the goal of this particular method um, is to establish a boundary around a subset of functions. Um, the reason that I, I particularly like this method for um, design analysis um, is that it mirrors in many ways um, the system boundary type approach um, that you would use say in thermodynamics or heat transfer uh, and then it also has elements of the block diagram method that you would have learned in your controls course. So um, we're essentially using a lot of the same tools uh, that you've been taught in your, your more technical engineering courses um, to help you in the design process. So I, I, I really like that feature of, of this method. Um, so the, the way to proceed um, is we want to represent the product to be designed uh, as what I put in air quotes as a, a black box. Um, so essentially a, a, a system boundary um, that <clears throat> contains within it um, all of the functions and sub-functions that this particular uh, design object um, has to satisfy. So, so what this black box does for us is first um, it converts any um, inputs into the system into outputs. Um, it contains, as I said, all functions needed to convert the inputs into the outputs. Um, and the box's boundary um, essentially defines what is the product and what is not the product, what's the surrounding. So uh, like I said, it works in a very similar way to a, a system boundary approach in thermodynamics. Um, there are uh, at least three different types of uh, inputs and outputs. Uh, those are energy, materials, and information. Um, and it, it turns out it's quite beneficial um, to, to be able to keep track of those, those three um, different types of um, uh, movements of stuff through the, the black box. Um, it's beneficial to represent them with different colors or different types of lines. So um, what I show here at the bottom of the slide um, it's just sort of a schematic representation of, of what I'm talking about, how you would represent this. So um, the black box um, is literally the, the, the block box on the screen. And then these are the inputs, so energy in red, material in green, and information in purple. And then the box somehow processes those inputs into outputs. And the outputs can also be information, material, um, and energy. So, so that's essentially, at least schematically, um, what this method will look like in a big picture perspective. Okay, so um, here's some, some more details about really how to, how to do this. Um, so first, uh, we want to put in the box um, all of the sub-functions, and the purpose of the sub-functions is essentially to meet the customer needs by converting uh, inputs to the black box into outputs from the black box. Um, each subfunction should be expressed uh, with a descriptive combination of a noun and a verb. Um, so for example, uh, maybe uh, remove waste or amplify signal. Uh, those are noun-verb combinations that um, describe the, the subfunctions um, of whatever this, this design uh, is, is attempting to do. Um, each subfunction um, has its own unique inputs and outputs, uh, which, which must be compatible. So um, when I say must be compatible, um, if you have a subfunction that absorbs um, mass in some way, so let's say, for example, um, you're, you're making tea um, and you have to put water and tea leaves into your uh, tea maker, um, so that's mass that you're putting into the system. Um, the result that, that comes out of the system, out of that particular subfunction that handled T and leaves, um, has to be some waste product um, of the combination of T and leaves. Um, you can't put stuff um, into a subfunction, matter into a subfunction, um, and just leave it there, right? Otherwise, it would, you know, think back to thermodynamics, it would just accumulate um, and eventually that subfunction would be overwhelmed by a big pile of 
uh, you know, unused tea leaves, essentially. So, um, so each sub function um, has to have an input and an output, and they have to be compatible with one another, and they have to make physical sense. Um, so fourth, um, sub functions are linked together via a doc block diagram approach um, to chart the flows of energy, materials, and information through the system. Um, and how the energy, material, information are combined together, how they're broken apart, um, how they support each other, um, how they collectively serve uh, the functions um, meeting the customer needs of this uh, this product that you're designing. Um, and the, what you know that um, you've converged to the right solution, the right configuration, um, because the correct black box contains all the necessary of sub functions to meet the customer needs and shows how all the inputs and outputs flow through the system, connecting together through the system um, to meet the, the customer needs and <coughs> uh, they're all compatible with each other. You're not leaving um, any information, energy, or material um, inside the system boundary. Okay, so um, here is uh, an example that I, I quite like. Um, so it's a functional analysis method example um, for headphones, like the headphones that, that I'm wearing right now. Um, and the way that I've broken this down um, is that there are three inputs. Um, information, so that's um, you know the, the audio signal, essentially. Um, although it doesn't start its life as an audio signal, right? It's a digital signal from your um, MP3 player or your computer. Um, then there's a, an energy input, and then there is uh, what I'm calling material. This is um, more of a functional requirement, um, but we'll see here in a second how that, that works. So um, the information, again, is the signal um, that comes from your MP3 player or your computer or whatever it is. Um, it crosses the system boundary into the headphones. So here I say connect to signal. So the headphones actually have to somehow make a physical connection, like a, like a jack or a USB port um, to the source of the signal um, that, that they're trying um, to send to the user. Um, that signal then has to be amplified so it can actually be heard by the person. And that amplification requires two things. It requires the original signal. So here's a line representing the original signal. And then here is energy <coughs> from the ambient environment that's coming in and helping to amplify the signal. The amplified signal um, then gets transmitted somehow, and that amplified transmitted signal then leaves the system boundary. This is presumably the sound that's actually in, uh, you know, the, the earphones that you're hearing um, as as the user. Um, so this other line here, the screen line, um, this is essentially just the customer need statement that the earphones have to fit over the ears. Um, and so my ears essentially are um, entering the system here. The system has to be designed so that it fits comfortably over my ears, and then that customer need, uh, material customer need, exits the system boundary there. Um, so I, I've uh, exceeded seven minutes, so let me make a quick pause here. Uh, you guys can take a break, and we'll be back uh, to continue uh, from here. Okay, see you in a moment.